If I were to say to you right now, what Jesus said to Peter at the end of that clip, you would look at me the same way Peter looked at Jesus. Why are we here? We are here to change the world. This merry little band. And some of you believe that as much as Peter did when Jesus said it to him. And yet, if Jesus was trying to say anything to Peter at that moment, it was not about fishing. It was about if you will use who you are and who you can become. You can help change the world. And some of us have been in church for so long, all our lives. And some of us became a Christian longer ago than we can remember. And preachers be preaching and teachers be teaching and songs be singing and it's all about God's changing the world through us and Man, weren't those pancakes good? <laughs> and we forget that in the end, we are called to give of ourselves to change the world. It is more than your job. It is more than your family. It is more than your children. It is more than anything. God wants to just reach into your life and say, let's make a difference. But some of us are so churched that really we're not sure God wants to do it through us. Maybe them. I am still convinced that in the power of God's presence we can change our part of the world. Where you work where you shop, your family, your marriage, your finances, your... Sometimes people will ask me, what's like the main point of New Song? And I say, it's the stellar teaching. <laughs> It's the tremendous music, it's the great pancakes, it's the... This is what I say. I don't even give our mission statement, I don't even give anything. So the main point of New Song is to convince you. And I always say you, because I like to make them think, oh. What's the main point of New Song is to convince you that God is relevant in every area of your life. That's the point of New Song for me. We have mission statements, we have purpose, we have objectives, we have core values, but when somebody asks me for the elevator speech, you know what the elevator speech is, somebody asks you a question, you got until the fifth floor, and then you just have to tell them, and then they get off and say, who was that knucklehead? What's the main point of New Song? convince you that God is relevant in every area of your life. Would you stand for a prayer together? 
God, thank you for being together with us. Thank you for all that you've prepared in the moments before we came together. Remind us, Lord, that uh, it is not about me and my thoughts and our thoughts. It is just about us trying to hear you through Scripture, through through our, our collective encouragement and support of one another. And so I pray that you would hide me and that you would place all of us under your protective wing. That what we do, what we say, and what we think would just be be infused with a sense of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. All of us in this room try, in some variety of ways, to maximize the impact of our resources. We try to maximize the use of our time. We got calendars, we got electronic reminders. When I put something on my calendar, on my smartphone, it even has ways that it can alert me several days ahead of time that this event is coming. So what I do is I put an event in my calendar and I put in three reminders. Two days ahead, one day ahead, a couple hours ahead. Lord have mercy, I must not be very bright. <laughs> But it's trying to maximize my time. We try to maximize our financial resources, stretch our dollars, we call it. Two for one sales, rebates, money back guarantee, unless we are driven by a strong impulse that we cannot overcome, which by the way the Bible calls coveting, wanting something, getting something that you really can't afford. Unless we're driven by something so strong especially for larger purchases, we try to investigate and figure out the costs and can I afford this over time? At least that's what we say we want to do. What is the best return on our time and our talents and our treasure and our money and our investments? Right? You want to maximize wherever you put your money. Because in today's world, you've got a lot of options. There are ads coming at us all the time about stuff that we really need want. Want need. We just have a lot of options. For a Christian believer, and I know some of you here are really exploring the faith, you're not sure that you buy into the whole Christianity thing, and I want you to know that that's awesome. We are glad you're here investigating and exploring. But for the Christian believer, the stakes about our finances are a little bit higher. Because how we use our money, where we invest our money, is one gauge of how much we trust God with our financial reality. It's just one measurement, but it is a measurement about how much we trust the Lord and seek to advance His cause in the world. It's not about new song, it's not about a particular community, but it's about do you invest your resources so that we can advance God's kingdom, His purposes. That's why I wanted to show you that brief video clip from the new movie, Son of God. Because it's the idea, and I love that one little clip in the beard, that one little snippet in the beginning, well, what do you want from me? Well, I, I want to give you a new life. Well, what makes you think I want one? There are times when I sense in my own prayer or in my scripture reading that God is trying to guide me in a certain direction and nudge me in a certain direction. And I think, man, that's awesome. I'm going to tell somebody else they should do that. I know none of you would do that. But truth be told, there are times when I know that I could align my actions, my choices, and my decisions more intently, more intensely with biblical teaching, and sometimes I'm not so sure I, I want. Could be my eating habits. 
could be the way I take care of myself physically. Certainly God cares about the way I take care of myself. Scripture says we have this one place in which the Holy Spirit resides. <coughs> the Bible has a lot to say about money. It uses terms like, of course, money, but possessions and debt and stewardship and borrowing and tithing. Tithing is taught anywhere from Leviticus, Deuteronomy to Jesus, challenging the leadership. It must be about sacrificing for others. You must be about bringing your very best to make a difference. Jesus indeed talked a lot about money, possessions. Jesus taught approximately 38 parables. Do you know that almost half of them, 16, almost half of them have to do with money and possessions? Jesus taught more about money and possessions than he did about heaven and hell combined. One person has calculated, I don't know the facts behind this, but one person has calculated that approximately 15% of everything Jesus taught dealt with money and possessions. And I just want to share with you one passage of Scripture this morning. It's from Matthew 6. It begins at the 19th verse. It's out of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount was a large teaching that Jesus did to a large gathering of people in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it's recorded. It's where Jesus gives what we call the Beatitudes, the blessings. Blessed are you who seek peace. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's where Jesus taught what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. It's where Jesus gave those famous words about you must not even lust after another person. If you lust after another person, it is the same as adultery. Jesus did not always soft sell what he was trying to teach. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at the 19th verse. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, what you really value, you put your heart into. I summarize these few verses in this way. Jesus saying, seek long-term investment. Think long-term impact. Think legacy. Do not store up your stuff, your investments, not just talking about money, but whatever you treasure. Do not think that here on earth is what is of most value. What is of most value is what you invest in God's kingdom. Your passion and your prayers, your time and your talent, and yes, your money and your treasures. Do not store these things up on earth where eventually the most valuable thing you possess eventually you will no longer possess it. Amen. Eventually it will be gone. And so I think Jesus is just saying think long term. Think kingdom minded. Think God's purposes. And then he summarizes, take a look at verse 
chapter 24, he summarizes this teaching on money and investment and possessions and stuff this way. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And then a verse you may or may not have heard. You cannot serve both God and money. You, you cannot serve both God and money. The way we serve something is how we lift it up as something more valuable. We lift it up as something to be honored. We pay homage to it. He does not say the root of all evil is the love of money. Here. But when we allow earthly stuff to be placed on the throne of our lives. When we value it, whatever it is, our time, our, our talents, our treasures, whenever we value that on earth instead of valuing it for its kingdom purposes, we have placed it above kingdom purposes. That includes our calendar. That includes our talents. The word mammon, you might have heard that last verse sometimes referred to as you cannot serve both God and mammon. You heard that word before mammon. Mammon is simply an Aramaic word. Jesus spoke Aramaic. It just simply means money or possessions. In our world, in American society, stuff, money, is pretty high up on the list. Nowhere does Jesus say it's all evil. But what do we use to advance God's purposes? We use our resources. We use our time. We use our talents. We use our calendar. We use our checks. We use our singing ability, our music ability. We use our teaching ability for the children. We use our digging up the ground and planting things for gardening ability. We use our whatever ability. Here's, here's the reason. Because whatever you use together for God's purposes is multiplied. Because if you bring your very best and you bring your very best and you invest in the church in time, talent, treasure and you bring some energy to your ministry and you bring some treasure. If you all do this together, then we make a kingdom advancement. I've shared this with you too many times before, but I'm going to share it with you one more time. Well, probably not just one more time. Probably lots more times. But it is not about the size of our congregation in numbers. It is about the unity of focus and purpose in our congregation. Jesus had 12, one of them betrayed him, one of them left him, and when they decided to come together in the power of the Holy Spirit, they were a weak ragtag bunch, and then they began to change the world. When they realized how much they needed God's Spirit to strengthen them, and when they decided we will unite for the kingdom of God. They became an unstoppable force. How would you like to be an unstoppable force for the kingdom of God?
in the church, although Jesus has done so much teaching on uh, money and possessions, in the church we've done a little bit of a disservice. Because in the church, we talk about, and I hope some of you can see this. If not, it's going to be a great drawing, so come up and snap some pictures of it later. But in the church, we know that there's a word called stewardship, right? You've heard the word stewardship before. And in the church, very often, we talk about having a stewardship campaign. Or, for this month, we're going to focus on our stewardship. And unfortunately, in the church, for many people, when they hear or see the word stewardship, it may not be the only thing they think of, but what's the first thing we often think of? The first thing we often think of is, oh, they're going to focus on money. Honey, I think it's time to take a trip and go see the pictures. Stewardship, in biblical terms, is indeed partly financial. But it is about all of you. All of who you are. And so the way I would like us to begin to think about and to process stewardship, even when today we're going to be uh, filling out and agreeing to participate in the tithe test or or willingness to give. We've been talking about this for a few weeks and got emails, so you all know this. But you're going to be given this opportunity. But even there, when you are indicating a financial thing, we have to get away from thinking the financial thing is just about money. Stewardship is just about money. The way at New Song, I would like for us to begin to think about stewardship and finances would be much more much more along this way. Can't see that real well, can you? Stewardship of all that you are is at the heart of the cross. We are bringing Finances, yes. But we're bringing finances because we want to make a difference in the kingdom. We're not bringing finances in the end to New Song. We're bringing finances to New Song to make a difference in God's kingdom. To advance His purposes. Yes, the Bible teaches tithing. Yes, I challenge you to consider tithing. Yes, I think it's the right way to go. But what I want you to focus on is it is not about the amount that I bring. It is about the reason that I bring. The reason that I sacrifice. The reason that I want to invest in New Song so it together can advance God's kingdom. It is trusting not just the leadership of New Song, but it is trusting that God is still moving in us to make a difference. So in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to give you some time to uh, receive this tire test document that we've already looked at. and. You got it on email and you may have printed it out and filled it off already and that's awesome and great. But I just really want you, we're going to play some music in the background and if you are here with uh, your spouse, your significant other, would just encourage you to sit together, to pray for a moment about this.
And then um, up front here are some baskets. There's a couple here, a few on the, on the platform. Because I really would like you to see this as a prayer of dedication time. If you see this as a time when you're just kind of filling out a form, bringing it forward, okay, this is what I'm going to give to New Song this year, then I have just spoken for 25 minutes and I have not communicated very accurately. If you come committing to tithing, committing to giving, dedicating whatever it is in that was. From five dollars a week to five hundred a week. If you come forward and say, I just I just want to use a part of who I am. Come together with these brothers and sisters. I want to advance God's kingdom. Then maybe something scripture has said makes a difference. I shared with you last week this key. This key was from Luke 9, 10 to 17, a little story. But here is the key to take all. That Jesus cannot, Jesus will not use what we do not give. What we hold on to as ours, Jesus will not rip out of our hands. That's not how our faith works. New song cannot, will not use what you do not give. We will not rip out of your hands what your passion is not willing to invest as much as the finance team would like to. And so, there's a great little story in one more um, biblical citation. It's in Luke 12, 15 to 21. You can look at it later. Jesus says, <laughs> your life does not consist in your possessions. And then he tells this great story. You may recall this great parable. And he said there was a guy who was a very successful farmer. And uh, his fields were doing really well. He planted a garden and it was just like really lots of stuff, good stuff. And he said, I, man, I don't know what to do with all of my blessings. I don't know what to do with all of this. I know what I'll do. I'll build a bigger barn. I'll just keep more stuff. And in the parable, Jesus says that God speaks to this man and says, yeah, but you don't know. Tonight is the night you will die. And then what good is your bigger barn? I don't think Jesus was sharing that parable in Luke 12 as like a threat. I, I think he was reminding us of what we know, but we really don't like to think about too much. There will come a time when it's over. For each one of us. There will come a time when it's over for new song. There will come a time when it's over when the kingdom comes. And for me in my house, and I think for you in your house, you just want to look back and say, I did invest in ministry. I, 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 I did allow myself to not get so busy that I couldn't serve in ministry through the church. And I did, I did invest my financial resources to make a kingdom of that. For Cynthia and I, 
uh, we we determined a long time ago when we first got married. Um, I had been tithing uh, for a long time, and that was uh, kind of a new challenge for uh, for her. Uh, the actual ten percent income and so on. You know, first, not the first met. We didn't even think about. I just share with you that this is something I uh, wrestled with a long time ago. And so for us, our kingdom uh, advancement is um, 10, I think 12% or so, whatever it is here. But we also do some things outside like you all do. You give to Red Cross or you do American Cancer Society. We advance God's kingdom through secular organizations that do great work. It's awesome. Biblical teaching is about investing this this tie, this sacrificial gift in advancing God's kingdom through the community of faith. And so this morning as you prepare to just indicate your investment, that's all. To advance God's kingdom through New Song Church. I encourage you to think one or two ways. Am I thinking long term? Am I, am I willing to look long term? Do I want to make a kingdom impact through this community of faith? think long term? And am I willing to think sacrificially to make a kingdom impact through the church? So, here is where I'm just going to turn it over to you for a few minutes. I have some people who have some uh, of the tithe test forms. If you would pass those out now, everybody get one tech booth up front everywhere and when you have uh, all received that and if you need a pen or a pencil or something just to uh, take one from your neighbor and if it says new song on it keep it Let me just real quickly take a look at that with you. Uh, the top one is that you are committed to fully tithing, and, and we explain some scriptures in there, and the church is pledged to be faithful with your resources. And the tithe test simply is that you tithe for three months, and if you believe that your investment has not been honored by God according to Malachi and then just don't feel like that's worked out for you, you just let us know and we will return that three-month tithe. That's why it's called a tithe test. Another one down there is to I will pray, uh, I, I will prayerfully and sacrificially increase my giving. You see, check that if that's appropriate for you. The other one, prayerfully sacri sac sacrificially maintain my level of giving. And then the last one there, if you just uh, say it's just just not 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 you right now. God's not not convicted you about this and and, and new song and so on. You'll not be participating, but you still pledge to seek God's will for your um, for your finances and all other areas of your life. Because it is not uh, just about me. We are certainly uh, bold enough to say. All churches, all organizations need resources to advance their cause. We, we don't shy from that. We don't shy from the biblical challenge of tithing. We don't shy from that uh, for Christian believers. But, but I'm, I'm really asking that we, New Song, begin to develop a, a model of looking at finances through the lens of stewardship and the sacrifice of the cross.
So, I'm going to ask them to, to start this CD or to turn on this music in just a moment. That was just a taste, in case you want to know what it sounded like. That will be the cue. Ask them to start that in just a moment. And uh, we're just going to give you a few minutes to, to not only fill out the form if you haven't, but to, but to pray about it. And then there are baskets up here and to the side. Um, just any time while the music is playing, um, just come forward. You fold it over. You, you just fold it over. Nobody else needs to see this. this is, uh, uh, and then immediately after the service, uh, the finance team will collect these up and, and put them in the office. So on. Does that make sense? Kind of clarity? Okay. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If you happen to be watching this later on on YouTube, or if those of you who are maybe watching it for the first time, uh, this is about investing in God's purposes. It is not just about money. New song is never just about one thing. Unless it is seeking the relevance of God in your everyday life. That's our deal. And so we, New Song, collectively, together, we do what we can. And we let God challenge us. And so thank you for whatever you have chosen to give, whatever sacrifice you have chosen to make. Through this new strategic planning process, through all the ideas and dreams that we have, my friends, look around you. We have everything God needs if we give Him us. You are investing in kingdom advancing purposes. You have done what you believe you can do. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Come and share the joy of Jesus himself. Will you stand for the closing prayer? God, at the heart of who we are in our society, we tend to be consumers. We tend to aggregate our finances so that we can purchase and please ourselves. And God, we know that you want us to have the kind of life in which we can enjoy and provide for our children and ourselves and just move and enjoy all the blessings this world has. Help us, God, to periodically look just a little farther down the road, a little deeper into the soil of your kingdom and to realize that it is true the only reason we give 
because you already gave. The earth for our pleasure, our community to support and challenge us, the, the air we breathe, the health we have. those that love us when our health isn't what we wish. When our finances are less than what we want. Help us to be about, Lord. Remind New Song and its leadership that every penny, every dollar in some way must advance your kingdom. Build this church, Lord. Build this church in such a way that it shocks us. Beyond surprise. Let us be shocked by your power working through us. In Jesus' name, amen.